we're going to talk about a jacked up heart. Because <laughs> nobody in this room ever deals with a jacked up heart. No, everybody in this room is perfect. They constantly have the mind of Christ. And they never get their heart jacked up. They never go through any issues and nothing ever bothers them because they're superhuman beings. So I know that I'll be preaching to the choir that nobody <laughs> needs to hear this message today. But, you know, I need it. I'm not perfect, I will tell you. And uh, there's still things that uh, I have to work through. But, you know, since I know none of you are that, but, you know, just bear with me. I need the message. So we're going to look at a few things, you know, that I need today. <laughs> And uh, one of those is we're going to start in Galatians chapter 5, and we're going to talk about something that's so popular today. <laughs> Galatians 5, I'm going to use the old-fashioned thing, so just give me a minute, it's been a while. I've been using even paper a lot here lately. I went back 20 years. Well, let's start in verse 1. Stand fast, therefore. Now, stand fast, therefore. That means you, when you take a stand, I could get Sister Scarlett up here because she may beat me, but if she took a, she'd give me a look, Pastor, why don't you do that? <laughs> if she got up here and she took a stance and she got ready to defend herself, I mean, no, she's ready not to be moved. That, but if you don't take the stance, guess what happens? You can be moved. Right? So it says, stand therefore fast, therefore the liberty where Christ has made us free. So he made you free, he gave you freedom. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. How many like freedom? Amen. But how many, when, I know none of you, but when my heart gets jacked up, my freedom feels like it sometimes it started that my freedom and peace start kind of oozing out the bottom. Yeah. And so therefore I have to set my mind. And overcomers, we teach all about negative heart conditions and then positive heart conditions because when you have addictions, hang-ups, and hurts, if you're not careful, you'll go back. The devil knows that he has no authority over you. That's what you need to know this morning. Greater is he that's within you than he that's in the world. And he can't make you do anything. There's no addiction big enough to control you. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. But he can't deceive you into opening the door. And he'll do that through things that uh, uh, negative heart conditions. He knows just how to play on your strength. And if you don't stand fast, you'll be deceived and fall for some of his trickery. Right? And your heart will get jacked up. That's good old hillbilly terms right there. You know. And so, stand therefore fast with, and then be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That means that I know that I could get myself tangled back up in a mess again if I wanted, if I let myself. But how many know you have a choice? Right? So the key, now listen, before I get started, I'm going to tell you something the Holy Ghost said. So he spoke to me on the way in. He spoke to me this week, this week different times and I've had lots of opportunities for a while for my heart to get jacked up. I, I have, I've had, it seems like he's been on overcooker to try to see if he can get her there. Just being honest with you about things. And it, it, it's not just one thing, it comes from lots of things. You know, but I used to be proud of myself because, you know, there was a time when I had to repent because I acted upon my jacked up heart. I know none of you have ever been there. You know. And then I got really proud of myself, you know, pride, pride comes before the fall, <laughs> that I wasn't responding physically in the flesh anymore when my heart was jacked up. And then I read this verse somewhere, I just somewhere, that said, God judges the intentions of my heart. Now, thank you, I, mean, I was doing good. I wasn't punching nobody in the face. I just wanted to. <laughs> I know none of you have ever been there. I know this is extreme. No, you're like, liars. Anyhow. <laughs> you know, and 
now all of a sudden, now he's judging my intentions. You wanted to do it. That's the same thing, son. Your heart still got jacked up. Now, if you're where I was at once and a baby Christian and you're still just working on not slapping the snot out of them, congratulations, keep working on it. Crucify that flesh. I'm just letting you know that there will come a time that he expects even more out of that. And don't get discouraged because the same guy that helps you not punch him in the face physically will help you not want to punch him in the face. Are you still here? Now... I know not everybody wants to punch them in the face. Some just want to give them a piece of their mind. Some of them just, you know, whatever your thought is. I'm just throwing out some of the things, you know. I, I came from a different lifestyle. You may never have ever wanted to punch anybody in the face. Okay, great. Praise God. Are y'all still here? Yeah. Y'all are quiet. I, I know we're just talking about me, but y'all are quiet. So go on down to... Uh, Verse 24. I'll jump past all the idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, civilization, strife, enemies, murder, drunkenness, reveling, you know, party and lust. You know, we'll just backbiting and devouring one another. You know, we'll just skip over all of that. Nobody here backbites and devours somebody, do they? Okay. Verse 22, let's read that. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Now the Bible says he you will know them by their fruit. 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 This is their fruit. If they got, do they got love? Do they got joy? Do they got peace? Do they got long-suffering? Do they got gentleness? Do they got goodness? Do they got faith? Do they got meekness? Do they have temperance? You know, temperance means they, that keeps them they temper their temper. Come on. They, they're long suffering. I didn't mean they put up with everything. And so, anyhow, you get the idea because this ain't the message today. This is just getting started. <laughs> and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. When your heart's jacked up, I'm just going to break it to you real simple. Your flesh is running you, not your spirit. <laughs> When, you're, when your heart is jacked up, your flesh is running you, not your spirit, man. You let your flesh take control in some area. And then how do you get back control? How do you get back your peace, your joy, your love? Come on. So you can go ha, ha, ha at the devil. How do you get it back? Repent. You repent. Repent is the gateway to freedom. And then you crucify your flesh. You say, no, we're not doing that. That doesn't line up with the word of God. I'm physically going to stop that. What does the Bible say to do for your enemies? Bless them, pray for them. So you're going to have to stop thinking about, you know, bless God, they better be glad I'm saved. <laughs> With a knob on their head. You know, and start actually praying for them. Yeah. Don't worry, even some of you are dealing with offense too, because that's just as bad. It's a millstone around your neck. Only person you're killing is you. Big smile. But you have to you have to be the one to crucify it, didn't he? Yes. He didn't say go to the altar and have Pastor Brian crucify your flesh and get it back under control. I could deliver you from what it, from those spirits that you've let in that are hindering you, but then you're gonna have to go do the work. You're going to have to line up with the Word of God. You're going to have to build your character. You're going to have to crucify your flesh. Right? right? Now, before you get hung up on all the work, what are you getting? What was all above there? Love, joy, peace, bigness. That sounds like a lot of good stuff to me. Does anybody here like being miserable? <laughs> Does anybody here like not having their peace? So is there anybody in here that enjoys it when your heart gets jacked up? <laughs> But you know, we have this human condition. Well, by George, I'm right. <laughs> you can be 100% right and still be 100% wrong. Because you're handling it wrong and you've got the wrong heart and God judges the intentions of your heart. And a lot of times you just think you're right. Because you've not asked nobody else and you sure haven't looked at the Word of God. 
Most people start off talking to me, let me tell you what I think, and I just want to go, and I probably will anymore. I'm just getting old and can take her some old age, you know, so I'm like, you know, there's your problem. Let me stop you right there. You're going to tell me what you think. I just want to hear what the Word of God has to say. And by the way, if that's offending you this morning, your heart's already jacked up and you really need this message. Amen. Big smile. Come on, listen. Let's get something straight this morning. I'm preaching this because I want you to walk out of here free, full of joy, uh, skipping on daisies, singing kumbaya. Come on. I want you so full of the joy of the Holy Ghost, you make all the uh, all, all the mosquitoes have drunk in the Holy Ghost in Springfield. That's what I want. But if you think you're not going to have to deal with the jacked up heart, you are deceived. Every human being alive has to deal with our heart. And if you don't deal with it, then it's dealing with you. It's not if my heart gets jacked up, it's when. And then I have to start applying the word of God and look at it. So then I need to recognize it. So, And the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. If you never admit your heart's jacked up, can you ever be free? No. So when you admit, Lord, I need help. That's the first thing, right? And then you got to repent. First John 1 9. Y'all done said that. He's faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and wash you clean of all unrighteousness, right? And that's the start of crucifying your flesh. Flesh, you don't own me. You don't rule me. Yes, you have the right to be upset. I used to really be happy because I didn't respond in this flesh realm. And God found, He took me to the woodshed years ago and said, That's not good enough. I'm judging the intention of your heart. You still wanted to do it. Now listen, there's a difference when the devil putting a thought in your head. The Bible says take every thought captive to exalt itself above the mind of Christ. Not every thought that comes in your head is from God or from yourself. And the devil will put stuff in there. But sin happens whenever you start reacting on it and you don't always have to bring it to the physical realm. You can just want to do it. Whether it's lust, anger, whatever it is. That's why it's the intention. Intention means you want to. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. Intention means you want to. And what does God judge? He judges the want to of your heart. What do you want to do? I want to have joy. I want to keep my peace. Some days it's easier than others. How about that? Remember we're talking about me. I'm not perfect. I hate to break it to you. I'm a human being. Here lately there's been a few people that my intention was I wanted to string them up by the neck. But I didn't. And for a minute I didn't even want to pray for them. <laughs> but I did. And I interceded for them. But are you just shocked that that ain't always my first inkling all the time? It is most of the time anymore. But I sure didn't start out that way. I got a story I may tell about that. We'll just see what the Lord does. So crucify the flesh with the affections and lust. Uh, so, you know, your spirit, your flesh man has desires. And most of them, they're the opposite of everything we read of the Spirit of God. And so, you know, what is ruling you today? Like I said, I can remember just when I was really happy. I was proud when I just didn't smack them in the head. And it was a God, that was a God to change me. Anybody that knew me could see that is a living miracle. He did not respond. Some of you are way better than me, I can tell you. Some of you just internalized it, you know. But there came a point when he said, that's just not good enough. I need you to do different. So, he says, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. We need to stay in the Spirit realm as much as possible. 
But when the cares of this life start choking the life out of it, it'll rip us from that spirit realm back into this natural realm. And it'll get your heart all kinds of jacked up. And then you'll want to tell everybody how right you are. Yeah. Or what they did to you or how you think it ought to win. Do you know God really doesn't want your opinion or need it? He just needs you to line up with the Word of God. If you want the joy and peace of God, you got to line up with the Word of God. Right? Okay. So let us not be desirous of vain glory. Come on, who gets the glory of God? Provoking one another, envying one another. You ain't no better than nobody else. It says, I'll go ahead and read verse 6. Brother, a man be overtaken in a fault. Ye such a spiritual restore and one in the spirit of meekness, consider myself, lest I be also tempted. So when a brother falls, we're supposed to do our best to build them up and lift them up. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to go to a couple of other scriptures. About to get into the meat of the thing. It's only 11.30. Isn't that glorious? Mm -hmm. Real fast, if you have your Bible, go to Mark 4.19. Mark 4.19. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things. Wasn't that what you're just talking about we had to crucify? Yeah. Wasn't that just what we read had to be crucified? Anybody? Anybody see that? Yeah. Choke the what? What is it choking? The word. the word of God. It wants to overcome, overtake the word in your life so that you go, let me tell you what I think. <laughs> the only thing you can base your life on and keep your peace and joy is the word of God. If the word offends people, that is their problem because sometimes they need to be offended. To change because it's a whole lot better than the, out, than the other outcome, which is them going to hell. God will do whatever it takes to win souls, and it's our job to line up with the word, right? And then it says it become un what? Fruitful. So now that, that means that this is for believers that once had the fruit of God in their life love, joy, peace, meekness. Come on, we just read it. I'm not, there's no twisting or perverting here. The enemy comes along to take your joy, your peace, come on. All of those fruits, and now it starts becoming unfruitful. It was once fruitful, and now it's not fruitful. <coughs> Why? Because your heart got jacked up. And if you think your heart won't get jacked up, you're deceived. I got to crucify my flesh daily. And daily I have to line myself back up with the Word of God and I've got to put the Word of God in daily so that I know what is the right path. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet so I know what path I'm on and where I'm going. Y'all still here? Yeah. And these that are which sown on good ground such as hear the Word and receive it. Now last week we talked about not just being a hearer of the Word but a doer, right? So they hear the word received and bring forth fruit. Some 30 fold, some 60, some 100. So when you don't let, when you crucify your flesh, not only does he promise that the word won't get choked, but then that word is going to be able to multiply in your life and the fruit thereof. But how many know that you still have to do the crucify? Amen. You still have to take authority. Y'all still here? John 14, 27. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. Now we've been talking about this a lot. How many like peace? Amen. I mean, I would really like peace. I'm a no drama zone. I don't like drama. I don't like when I have to deal with things. I don't I deal with lots of things as pastor and that's all that all the time. You have no idea. But None of it is worth my peace. But 
not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Say, let not your heart be troubled. When your heart's jacked up, what is it? Troubled. Troubled. You let the cares of this life come in and start troubling your heart. Which then we see right here. Come on, I'm not. It's, we're just reading the word. It's plain. It takes away your peace. Now, did he say, don't let the devil trouble your heart? No. He said, you don't let your heart be troubled. Amen. You have a choice. What is the choice? To believe the word of God. Is that always easy? No, it's not. <laughs> You know, the doctors give reports or this and that. And then you have to go surround yourself with the Word. And you have to feed more on the Word than on every other thing that's coming at you. That's why how you resist the devil and he shall flee. Amen. It's not easy. They're, they're, that, that's the fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. I'm reaching over in the unseen realm and bringing it into the seen realm. But if I'm not careful, if I focus on the wrong things, my heart will get jacked up and I will put a hindrance on that very thing that I'm trying to pull over. Yes. And I'm human. I know you guys don't ever have that problem. <laughs> and sometimes it has. To, he'll, he'll get my heart jacked up on something that has nothing to do with the main issues that I'm dealing with. And I'm dealing with them fine. It'll be what seems to be some small thing. But how many know it's the small foxes that spoil the vine? Amen. Come on. That's scripture if you don't know. And the Bible says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Just ask a youth group one time. I gave them brownies and then told them there was only a little tiny piece of dog turd here. Don't worry about it. You know, nobody wanted those brownies. Nobody. Yeah, just tiny piece. Don't hurt nothing. Your chances of getting there are slim to none. That's what sin does to your life too. Yes. <laughs> let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now, if you fear fear without faith, it's impossible to please God. Fear is not of God. Fear is the opposite of faith. No, we're not to have fear. But to say that you don't have to crucify fear sometimes would be a lie. If you've ever had a big negative report from the doctor and they told you like with me they told you how you're going to die and never going to be able to walk and all these things you know there's something that tries to jump up in your throat for a minute that you have to crucify and then say no <laughs> said by his stripes I was healed past tense it's finished at the cross I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord that is what I will stand on that is the hill I will die on and it won't be nothing that you said See how that works? But I have to crucify that. And then guess what though? Sometimes I get up the next morning and I gotta crucify it again. Mm -hmm. Do you know what? You can do just about anything you want to me. But if you mess with one of you or you mess with my little old mama, mm -hmm. the lion comes out in me. In case you didn't know that. It, it just, you know, but I have to always respond as a man of God. I cannot get into the flesh realm because then it does nobody no good. And usually, to be honest with you, I live by something. I keep my mouth shut and my heart right and I let God fight my battles. <coughs> but within the last year or so, the world has changed so much. God's been doing a little something different with me. There's been now three occasions or he, he's wanted me to deal with people and situations. And I'm like, Lord, I'm just let you deal with them. You're way better than me. He said, if they'll do this to them, they're going to do this to more people. And you're a man of God, and I want you to hold them accountable. Because if you don't hold them accountable, who's going to? Do you know that's no fun? That it's not easy to do? Now listen, I've never ran from controversy. That's not my thing. But I'm always more worried about people's souls than the issues. But there's times that you have to hold people accountable. Y'all still here? 
But you can't do it with the jacked up heart. I know none of you have ever, nobody in this room is dealing with a jacked up heart. Nobody has any of those things. So, would he tell you not to let your heart get troubled if your heart couldn't get troubled if you were superhuman? Just stop and think about it for a minute. How many times, whenever you've been doing your level best to push through and be super Christian as the devil come along and beat you up because your heart got troubled? <coughs> well, if you really had your act together, this wouldn't bother you. I know none of you have been there. <laughs> but you're human, but the good news is that Jesus is human just like you, had every emotion like you, and he overcame them, and he's living inside you, and so is the same spirit that raised you from the dead. And when in your weakness, come on, in your weakness, his strength is made perfect. He puts the super to your natural and helps you to overcome. That's how you fix a jacked up heart. First, you have to admit you're having a weakness. Lord, I know you're judging the intention of my heart. And I haven't physically said or done anything, but I sure wanted to. It was only for three seconds, but I still wanted to smack them, God. <laughs> but it was enough to affect my spirit, man. And I lost some peace, so I'm sorry for that, God. And will you help me? Will you help me love them the way that you love them? Oh, I know none of you have been there. Or maybe some of you are like I was. You're just proud of yourself for not hitting them. Well, praise God, man. That's awesome. I've been there. No, no, I'm not joking. I mean, I've been there. That was an overcoming time for me. Or I didn't, listen, I, I, I used to have a tongue that could cut you into shreds, spit you up, and put you back together and break you down in bigger pieces. And the time, and, and, and when God really started dealing with me and not, not doing any comebacks, just taking what people threw at me. That was a hard season. But you know, I really learned to walk in love, and I found that people that usually had the meanest things to say were some of the most broken people. Or the ones with the sharpest tongues were like I used to be the most broken. Anyhow, that's free. Y'all, y'all get anything out of this this yes. morning? Yes. Oh, yes. I mean, I know none of you have been dealing with jacked up hearts and the, the storms of life you've been going through, and nothing's been bothering you. But I'm so thankful that see, when we just come to God, we can come boldly to the throne of grace. And say, Lord, I'm dealing with some stuff. Can you help me? I'm so thankful that we have a God that understands us and we can get our heart right and we can get right back to the joy and the peace of God. And it can flow. Isn't that good news? You don't go, well, you heathen, if you'd have really been a good Christian, your heart would have never got jacked up. Come on, he just said, if your heart is troubled. Right? Moving along for time's sake. I only got a few minutes left. Somewhere. Luke 17. I've not even got my notes yet. Luke 17. Everybody there say amen. amen. That was fast. Used to, you could tell when people were there by the rustling of their pages, but your phones don't make no noise. <laughs> Luke 17. Verse 1. Then he said unto the disciples, who's talking here? <coughs> it is impossible that offenses will come. Listen. It's not if you get offended, when? it's when. And if you're waiting for somebody else to fix whatever you got offended over, you've got a long time to wait with a jacked up heart. And the only person it's going to kill is you. Yeah. Yeah. And even if they said they're sorry, you still wouldn't believe them because you want to be right, because you still want vindication for that offense. Right. 
Y'all still here? So, it is impossible, but the fences will come. The woe unto him through who they come. So, you also don't be the one one giving them, right? It is better for him that is a millstone or hanging about his neck and cast into the sea that he should have fed one of the little ones. Like So if you go around, look, and the little ones, by the way, that's baby Christians. That's people that don't know better. If you're going around, you, you, want, you want to see my hackles come up, start messing with baby Christians that are still learning and you try to put your religious junk on them. I'm going to give you a spanking faster than your head can spin. Right. I'll do it in love with a smile on. You might even not even know you're getting spanked at the time, but I promise you it'll correct you. But an offense, no matter who it is, puts a millstone around your neck, and you might as well go jump in a lake with this huge rock tied around your neck. Yeah. And that only affects who? You. You. So the only way to get rid of offense is forgiveness and to walk in love. That's it. And repent for getting one, to be honest with you. Lord, forgive me for being offended. All right? Because when you're offended, your heart's jacked up and everything you see, you see through that offense. And you can't see anything clearly. Not even the love that God has for you and probably the person you're offended at has for you. Not always. Some people are just jerks and you just gotta let God deal with them. But just call it how it is. But don't let them being a jerk steal you you of your love, joy, and peace. It's not worth it. I I mean everybody in here knows that you gotta forgive to be forgiven, right? Does everybody know that? I mean, does everybody find that super easy always to do? I mean, nobody's heart's ever got jacked up over that, right? I mean, I know I'm the only one in here again that's ever had a jacked up heart. Said, take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. If he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. So if he keeps being a jerk and he keeps saying, I'm sorry, you just keep loving him anyways. Is that always easy to do? No. I mean, sometimes you just want to choke him until God be died, you know. But there's that intention again. I didn't actually do it, and I didn't tell anybody, Pastor. No, but you wanted to. You wanted to. Amen. Why do I keep saying this this morning? Because it gets your heart jacked up and it cuts you off from the love, joy, and peace of God that you need. Right? Is there anything in here worth your love, joy, and peace? How many would like to leave here full of love, joy, peace? How many know you can? If you're not right, you can get right, right? If somebody's offended you, go to them and say, hey, I, I forgive you, whatever. And, and, uh, don't be like some people. You know what you really did was wrong. And I just want you to know that I'm forgiving you for being such a dirty, low-down heathen. You did not forgive them, and you did not wash the offense clean. You just went and smeared poop in their face when it was all over you. Just tell them that like it is. I, I, I have experience, remember? I'm the one with all the jacked up arms. <laughs> okay, let's go to a couple of other scriptures this morning. John 14.1. John 14.1. John 14, 1. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Everybody there say amen. amen. Let not your heart be troubled. Wait a minute. This Christian walks easy. Why does he keep saying... Do not let your heart be troubled. 
I mean, it's easy, right? Why would he have to keep telling me that? It's all laughs and giggles. It's easy street. Come on. Nobody's heart ever gets jacked up. Nobody's heart ever gets troubled. Why does he keep saying it? Why don't anybody ever preach about this stuff? Your heart is going to be troubled. You're going to have the opportunity every day. That's why he says crucify your flesh daily. Every day you're having the opportunity for your heart to be troubled. But you need to realize what that troubled heart costs you. It costs you your peace. It costs you your joy. And if you're not, if you're not, don't get it under control, you're going to keep sliding the wrong, keep feeding the wrong stuff. The next thing you got a cesspool. Amen. Right? Amen. My heart still, I still deal with stuff. I, I, I'll tell a story when the Lord lets me. Every time I thought he told me to tell it, then I feel not. So this might be the right time yet. <laughs> Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Amen? Amen. So, jump on down to verse uh, 27. 14, chapter, same chapter, verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give, give I unto you. What? What's it say again? Let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Neither let it be afraid. And now he's talking about when he goes away, that he's not going to be there. But how many know sometimes when you feel all alone in something is when you feel the most trouble? Amen. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. Sometimes when you feel all alone in something, mm -hmm. the other, he loves to get you off in a corner. That's when your heart gets most jacked up. You know, that's when you're most dangerous is when you feel like you're back in a corner all by yes. yourself. Yes, sir. And that's when he wants to get, that's when he'll work on getting you all jacked up. And so then he says, but God says, don't let your heart be troubled. I'm with you. I'm sending my peace with you. Amen. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm with you until the end of the earth. Come on. But we have to crucify the flesh to maintain the connection. He's not going to crucify it for you. I hate to tell you that. Some of you keep waiting for him to do the crucifying. Big smile. Come on. No, oh, here I am. Crucify me. He said, yeah, I know. You need to kill it. <laughs> You're looking like Frankenstein walking around. <laughs> Sorry, I got an image of the spirit. Man. That's an ugly spirit, man. Frankenstein. The Frankenstein church. <laughs> they need to live. Oh, Lord, that'll preach. So, you know how many times the world tells you just follow your heart? You know, that's one of the dumbest things you can ever say. Follow the word of God. Turn to Jeremiah 17, 9 real fast. Jeremiah 17, 9. Everybody there say amen. The heart is what? Well, it says deceitful in King James. You know, if it was good enough for Paul, it's good enough for me. Some of you get that later. It's a joke for those on record. The, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. God's going to give you. God will not be mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he reap. Make sure you're keeping the, cruci the, the, the flesh crucified. Grow in your spirit, man, so you can keep growing more of that in your life. If you don't like what's in your life, you need to change what's your soul. Amen. Hallelujah. 
And even then, your heart's still going to want to get troubled, okay? Amen. You're still going to have to crucify your flesh. And if you're like me, your heart's still going to get jacked up at times. Amen. <laughs> and then I'm going to have to do something with you. Right. It can always be somebody else's fault. Mm -hmm. Or I can just deal with my part and let God do the rest. Amen. Amen. My peace and joy is worth more than anything else to me. Thank you. And I ain't trusting my heart because it ain't know nothing. I'm going to follow the word of God. Yes, heart above all things is most deceitful. Most people today are following their heart. Thank you. I want to encourage you today they'll start learning to just follow the word of God. Amen. Even when it don't make sense to you. Because it don't always make sense. But it will Amen. lead and guide you into all joy and truth and peace. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen.